guys, we're back with another, now going down the road. <laughs> I like this segment. Anyway, I'm just running out to do a couple quick videos, but Ryan, I hope you're watching because the reason I'm making this video, because after watching your video, I, I know exactly what's wrong. I understand exactly, it's, it's not that this dog went on a long walk and now it's tired and Ryan's like going, oh my God. And then you're gonna be able to get him out later and he's not gonna be bored to tears. The, and it's a, it's, just, it's a simple problem. That's Daisy. God help me. Uh, uh, the problem is you're not doing any training in heightened reality. All of your training is happening in low reality, less than reality. So when you go out, you're now in heightened reality. It's your, all your training is, if you said, well, your dogs are always so excited. They're always in heightened reality when I'm working with them. They're not always in heightened reality, but once I go to engage them, they're in heightened reality. So that's, that's where you're going wrong. There's no heightened reality. And so as soon as it is heightened reality, your character's factored right out of the, does that make sense? Parker 2, man. Same thing. Parker 2. Uh... You know, your training is happening, and, and, and this is what people say to me all the time. Well, when there's nobody around in our living room, right? it practically performs, you know, it performs the whole Moscow circus with these people. But the second they get out and there's something more interesting than them, nothing else. Oh, my God. because this dog is just going to ruin the video because I'm not going to be able to talk over this thing. God awful. God awful. Just be thankful, Mandy, that Parker's not a barker like that. Because if you said, what is that? Oh, that's, that's, that's this dog's personality. That's its personality. Some dogs just like to bark. I know, you're just seeing the pain. It's awful. But, uh, hi, Lori. That's the problem that you guys have, too. This is what you got to tell JC. You, you know, when you're in the little garage and stuff, there's no heightened reality. You're, you're actually training. You've got to introduce the caller. And, and this is where you can, this is where you'll save yourself. If you can introduce it in heightened reality, then you can, then you can create that facade a little bit. But if you're introducing, and Ryan, I mean, if you take this dog out in that backyard later, it's going to say to itself, God, here we go again. Here we go again. You know, later I'll just, if I want any attention from this guy, I'll just rub my head up against his leg. <laughs> this fool falls for it every time. That's what Elliot tries to do. That's what Elliot tries to do, Ryan. He will come up, he'll flip your arm, he'll do all these things. You fall for that shit, you're screwed. I don't want it to be that way either. I really don't. But it can't be, you know, if you just said Ryan was my guy roommate, you wouldn't be treating him the way you do, acting so emotionally invested in the dog. But they see right through that. You've got to, even though that's not really how you feel, you've got to maintain a sense of indifference towards this animal until it's me and you against the world. And then you got your heightened reality. That's why I can get these dogs. I've introduced the pager in a state of heightened reality. And if you said, what is that? It's a chemical state of mind. I mean, that's what you have to think of. It's kids at Disneyland. It's, if we're getting ready to go to the concerts, getting ready to start, you know. If you're just training and, oh, yeah, yeah, here we go again. This is becoming tedious. Then that's what you've got. You've got dogs that are bored to tears. Because that's what I saw. I saw a dog doing it, but realizing this turtle's just, Ryan's like, oh my God, I'm blocking this one. You're just sort of moving along. And it's, you know, there's no heightened reality at all at all. So I think that's what you guys have to think of. Get the dog in that state of mind. If you said that's not possible to do, you got to go find another job. Or you got to go find something else to do because that's what you have to do. I'm getting ready to take Daisy up here. I think oh, she, she's quiet. I shouldn't say her name. Uh, up here. And this is a dog that's general state is heightened reality. 
So if I take it to a state of high dread, and if he said, what is it? He gets excited about anything. So I understand it's going to be excited when I take it to this environment, but I also understand I've, I've made myself a component of heightened reality because I was there when it happened. If you're always at your house, boring, blah, 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 now you get out, the dog isn't paying any attention to you, you basically just factored your character out of any scenes where there's heightened reality. You know, I mean, that's why there's such a thing as people that are just weak handlers that don't really have good reaction time and... That's where the pager can actually help these people, though. You know, in heightened reality, things are going to happen. Things are going to just seem bigger. So you got to get bigger. You know, that's that's the bottom line. Things are going to seem bigger. Your character needs to step into the lead. Not your character fades off and off stage, and all this takes place without you in it. So I think you've got to. You've got to go into heightened reality, right? The second I pick up that pager, I'm boom. My body language tightens up. I'm not loose. If you said you're loose and sloppy with your body language, I'd say, what? <laughs> I'd say, I'll tighten it up then. That's what I would say. So you honestly have to say to yourself, how much, how much into my core can I go so that I've got that dog looking into my heart? It's not doing that when you're going like this. This is your hand on this dog's head. That's what it's saying. So, you know, and I don't, you guys can develop your own way. I, you know, I don't think I always used to hold my hands like that, but the reason I'm holding my left hand like that is that's where, that's where I'm operating the dog from. And it's looking there. It's looking there because it knows any cues that I give it are radiating out from my core. Not these are the cues I. <laughs> See what happened there, you guys. Uh, you know that's that's what you're thinking. <laughs> exciting place you can and, and pop through some drills pop through some drills you know not not go out in the backyard and bore the dog to tears if you've had this dog for a couple years you're past that point some of your living with this dog has to be the dog having some pursuit of its own just whatever and not and part of that line has to be that these things are not controllable Elliot felt like all he had to do was come up and flip my elbow 
He doesn't have any use for me any other time. Certainly not when he decides it's time for Benjamin to die. Because that's what those shepherds are like. Oh, time for you to die now. Go quietly. And they, you know, I don't know if you saw the video where he was jumping on Benjamin, but if you said that wasn't going anywhere, the hell it wasn't. If that dog was intact, that's an eight-year-old male German shepherd that's had a history of dog aggression and almost killing other dogs. And, you know, his, his job would have been to kill Benjamin. Luckily, I've, you know, interjected myself in heightened reality because that's what that was. You know, chemically and everything, you're in a war. You know, it's just a state of everything seeming bigger. So I'm getting ready to pull in up here. I'm going to get this dog out. You're going to go get Simon out. I've never seen you by a shopping center or anything like that, Ryan. Maybe that's where you need to go. We need to get out of these fucking fields. We need to get some colorful backgrounds. We need to wear blue. We need to dress our character a certain way. And we need to go out and show this dog, this is how I act when we're out. Not, I'm under the assumption that because I said sit in the living room, you'll do it now. You know, no, that's our job. If we're the trainer, we have a very, 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 very active role in this. You know, we are the lead character in heightened reality. They, they, they were never there when we were a big factor. Because that's what happens to people. Heightened reality, they just take off. They just they either just take off from the people, or nothing you say can get their attention. All right, so look, I'm at the shopping center. It's fairly early, so this is what you need to do too, Ryan. I know it's later there, but it's not going to be hyper packed. I can load this environment up with some obedience. Then I can come back later when it is even more heightened reality. I understand with these dogs right now, just a strange location is probably going to incite heightened reality. So I don't want to factor in a gazillions of idiots. Because let me tell you what, you can get them some of them up here. So, all right, I'm here now. I'm just going to run through some drills. And this is what you're going to do later, Ryan. Because if you said, well, when we get someplace new, he's eyes on me. He's eyes on You know they're not. None of them are. They're eyes on the environment because that's what dogs do. So that's where your character suddenly steps up and you're, you're Clint Eastwood, you're Brad Pitt, you're whoever the story is revolving around. If you're not doing that, you just, you could blame them, you could blame them. You know, that's what they're looking for. They've got to have something that's a little bit interesting. Yeah, I, that, that's what they're looking for in life, you guys. I mean, they're not looking for, you know. They're not saying to themselves, yeah, that worked in the living room. Let's do this. Let's do that now. They're like, not now. All right, I'll be right back. And that's what you guys are, not you, man. You're not ready for that yet. When Parker comes back for his other training, he's going to get the, he's going to be at the shopping center three times a week. I'll tell you that much. But I will be right back. And this is what you can do these drills at your house, Mandy.